What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here and I am back. Programming will return to its regular scheduled time. In honor of my return from abroad, today we're talking about five tips, five tricks that you can do when traveling with your photo or video gear. Intro. <laughs> First things first, Pete, why is your face so red? Well, I'll tell you, the wind utterly destroyed my skin whilst climbing the side of a mountain. Needless to say, I was in four countries yesterday. That's crazy. And I started thinking to myself on the flight back, what can I teach you guys that I learned on this trip that would be valuable to you? And I thought, well, this is a perfect example of things you need, things to do, things to keep in mind when traveling with your equipment, be it on assignment or vacation or whatever it is, it's kind of something for everyone. A little bit of a mixed bag, if you will. So let's start with bags and organization. Now these are the bags I use, these are the pouches I use, the things I use to keep my gear safe, organized, and efficient when I'm traveling to shoot, or whatever it is. Photo, video, assignment, pleasure, doesn't matter. This is kind of my system that I feel is a good one to implement if you want to keep your stuff together. So, so many bags to choose from. There's roller bags, shoulder bags, sling bags, backpacks. I've had them all. For me, the best thing, I've come full circle back to the backpack. You can have your hands free if you're hopping a fence, if you're climbing under something. It's just the easiest bag to keep all your stuff on you without having that side bag flopping around when you're walking or slinging and gets stuck and then all that weight starts hurting your one shoulder. You can't roll a bag up a mountain. Every bag is good for something, but there's just some bags that are better for everything. For me, that's a backpack. Specifically, I like a backpack that opens from the back. Doesn't matter what brand it is, but if it opens from the back, that protects it from thieves. Six days ago, I was in Venice, Italy, and we were shooting some footage, and I put my bag down to grab some equipment, and I noticed three guys sitting on a bench. The second I put my bag down, they looked at each other. One got up, circled around behind me, pretended to talk on the phone, magically had a phone call. The other guy went around to his other side and they effectively formed a triangle around me and then one guy on the bench was keeping watch. I know what he was doing, I know what they were doing. I looked up, kind of gave him the nod. Yeah, nice, nice little, nice formation there. Yeah, real stellar. And he looked over at his friend and went like this and that was kind of the signal to, to tell them I had caught on and then they all went back and sat down. The phone magically went away and that phone call ended. <laughs> and I zipped up my bag and left. So you gotta be careful when you're traveling anywhere because people people wanna steal your sh so you gotta make sure it's safe, secure, and in order and nobody's getting into that bag except for you. I love the Low Pro, Pro Tactic 450. They're not paying me to say this, it's just a sick bag because it opens from the back. There's a lot of loops on the front that you can use to clip different things on and off, different pouches and kind of modular system. Now within that bag, I segregate all my devices, accessories, etc through different pouches. So I've got an audio pouch, I've got a cable pouch, I've got a battery pouch, because time is money if you're on assignment. If you're just shooting for, for leisure, time is also important because you might only have a couple seconds to get something, you might have only a couple minutes to get something, you need to know where your stuff is and you, can, and you need to be able to access that stuff fast. So for me, all my cables, dongles, whatever, what have you, stay in one bag. I know where that bag is. I can open up my backpack, pull up that bag, all my cables are ready. A lot of these tips might seem kind of basic, but not as many people think about them as you'd think. Someone's coming down the street, you're trying to get your batteries dead, looking through your pouches, stuff every filters coming out, lenses, there's gloves, there's a bag of chips that exploded in there, sun chips, because those are just extra. Ugh. It's not efficient. And when you're a photographer and you wanna make sure that you get those shots, efficiency, mm, that's key. Another thing you wanna keep in mind is airline restrictions. Does your bag fit in the overhead or are they gonna ask you to sky check it because hell no, you're not taking my bag. Are you kidding me? Mm. Point number two, doing your homework. What does that mean? I hate homework. I hated homework too. I don't think I ever did my homework. Regardless, doing your homework, very essential. Now there's two schools of thought on this. Let's say you're traveling to San Francisco for a vacation, and then let's say you're traveling to San Francisco for a photo assignment. If you're doing a photo assignment, chances are you already know what you're going there to shoot. So you go there, you shoot it, you get the job done, you come home, cool beans. All is well and good in the world. If you're just going to travel and you wanna make sure you get the most out of the time that you're there and you get good shots and you, you hit the right spots, you gotta do the homework. My recommendation is to open up Instagram, hashtag search San Francisco or find some Instagrammers that live in San Francisco and go through their photos. Find the spots that you like, that you'd wanna shoot at. See if they're geotagged. If they're not, maybe DM the person and say, hey, where did you take this shot from? Because having a little bit of a shot list 
that shows you location. That helps you manage your time so that you get everything that you need to get for photos, for video, you're good. You land, you get off the plane, you have some food, throw back a few tacos, and then you say to yourself, all right, I wanna hit this spot at this time, and then we're gonna go across the bridge to here. We're gonna hit that spot. This area looks amazing. The guy told me you can get in if there's a little hole in the fence, so we're gonna crawl under that hole. He told me if that's blocked off, you can go around it. Just planning your shots helps you ensure that you get everything you wanna get while you're gone and make the most of that time you're away. Now there's some people who might say, well Pete, half the fun is just exploring and wandering around with my gear and shooting whatever I think looks good. Yeah, absolutely, 100% agree with you. However, I like to do my homework so that I know the right spots to get the most epic photos or the spots that inspire me that I wanna do my take on that version. And then, once that's done, because that was so efficient and planned out, I've got plenty of time to wander around and explore and find my own spots. Now this goes as far as tracking your flight the day before you leave and seeing the flight path, the trajectory of the plane, because that way you can choose which side of the airplane to sit on when you do your online check-in, which means when that plane lands and takes off, wherever it is that you're leaving and going to, you have the best vantage from the best side of the window because we've all been there. You know when you're landing in Vegas or something and everybody's peering out the window on the right side and they can see the strip, you're on the left side like, what, what are you looking, what? Oh no, that looks so good, what, can I, ah. Oh. But if you have all these things planned out and you're on that window side, bah, 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 you've already got six shots coming in from the plane. Then you're gonna land and you're gonna hit two spots at night and you've got a location plan for the morning. So when you do your homework, you're gonna ensure to yourself that you get the best footage and the best photos because you put in the work. Yes. All right, let's talk about storage and dumping your footage. You need to bring an external drive with you. I can't even tell you how many times I've had drives crash, cards stop working, cards formatted because I didn't have my sh together. I'm trying to figure out what goes where and does this card empty, is that full? I'll just format it. <gasps> I didn't save it, no! Travel with some sort of a laptop or a hard drive so that you can be safe, dump your footage, back it up, and have that peace of mind so that you know when you go out shooting, you've already got a copy of that in the cloud and in the hard drive. Because trust me, I've been there, it sucks really, really bad. Okay, so here's a quick example of how I format and organize my footage when I'm on a shoot, be it it's paid or leisure. Let's jump into the computer right now. We're not gonna jump into it, we're gonna go over, because I mean, you know, whatever. Okay, so when you plug your hard drive into your computer or your laptop, or whatever it is that you're using, when you are traveling and you're essentially not at home, this is what I do for a typical workflow or backup of my files to make sure everything's safe and secure. So let's do an example of the trip I just did, which was through Italy and Switzerland and Germany and all that stuff. Let's just call it Alpine Road Trip. So we go Alpine Road Trip. Now, every single day, I'm gonna update this folder. So day one is day one. And I'm gonna write down day one and make sure it's all ready to go. Inside day one, depending on what I shot with, I'm going to update this folder with the camera names. So I'm gonna write, okay, the 1D I did some shots with. I did some shots with the GoPro. We flew the drone and we have some footage with the camera we were testing, which was the Olympus. And that is what I will make. Now inside the 1D, I'll make folders called photo and I'll make folders called video. Just make sure I spell it right. Inside the drone footage, depending on which drones, I might have the Phantom 4 and I might have the Mavic. So now we've got a pretty good file structure for day one. We've got our 1D footage with photos and videos. We've got our drone footage with the Mavic and the P4. We've got GoPro footage and we've got footage from this Olympus camera we were testing out. Now every day, I'm gonna make the same folder. So on day two, I'm gonna do the same thing. Day two, I'm gonna open it up. Depending on what I shot that day, that's the 1D footage. Maybe I only shot 1D and drone. And maybe I only shot the Mavic, so inside, just so that I know which drone it's from, to keep that organization on point, I'm gonna write 1D, drone, the Mavic, and that's it, that's for day two. That is everything completely organized. I'm gonna put my cards in, I'm gonna dump all the footage. So it's good to have three different types of backups, one locally on your computer, so in this case, I'd probably save it to my laptop as well, on the hard drive itself, which is the backup, and then I would back one extra time to Dropbox or whatever cloud service it is that you're using, to make sure you've got three contingencies. So if your hard drive crashes in your laptop, you've still got your external. If your external crashes, you still have the cloud. If the cloud crashes, you still got both of these. If everything crashes, well then, fuck it. 
just go home. Now next up is essential items. These are things that you need to bring with you that are gonna help you out so, so much. I'm only gonna go through a couple, so let's go right now. You need, if you're shooting video, you need, you have to get a variable ND filter. Now, what's a variable ND filter, Pete? Ha, I'm happy you asked. I'd be happy to tell you. Variable ND filter, think of it this way. So when you're shooting video, you need to do the 180 rule. So you gotta keep your shutter speed double what your frame rate is. So if we're shooting at 24 frames a second, which most people do, you wanna keep your shutter speed at a 48th or a 50. Some cameras only do 50 like mine. So you wanna keep it at 50. Now, what if it's outside and it's too bright and you wanna keep that nice shallow depth of field and you can't shoot at 50? That's when you put an ND filter on your lens. Now, a variable ND filter allows me to adjust the amount of light that comes in through that filter. So you can see if I spin it, it gets darker. And if I spin it this way, it gets lighter. So it's limiting the amount of light that comes in. Now the reason this is on the lens, think of it like sunglasses for the camera. I can put this on the lens, still shoot, keep my shutter speed at 50, and if it gets brighter, I just spin that filter a little bit and it blocks out more of the light. Keeps my shutter at 50, which gives me the most natural looking motion blur. Because if you don't do that, you get some jittery footage, it's too bright, and you gotta stop down and you lose that depth of field. So these, absolutely imperative. The second I just started to make this habit and not break away from it, my footage looks so much better. So there's links below for these if you want one. This seems like a no brainer, but trust me, <laughs> you'd be surprised. You need to have at least two batteries for every single device that you have with you. So if you're shooting with a steady cam, you've got two batteries. If you've got a drone, you've got two batteries. If you've got a mirrorless camera, you've got two batteries. If you've got a DSLR, you've got two batteries. The other one's in the camera. This one I nearly forgot last week. Shoof. Different places use different types of power, so you gotta make sure that if you're bringing a hard drive and a laptop to back up your footage, you can actually plug it into the wall. So, I mean, just get some adapters. What else do I need to talk about? What else? All right, tip number five is shooting at the right time of day. This is probably the most important point for me. A lot of the times I have friends, I have fans, I have people and family and whatever ask me questions and a lot of the questions I get is, how does that footage look so good? Why does that guy's stuff look so much better than mine? Or why do those clips look so much better than my clips? A lot of people don't shoot at the right time of day. Let's use the Matterhorn, for example, in Switzerland. I was there a couple days ago. A lot of people were out midday taking pictures of the Matterhorn. Now, did I do that as well? Yes, because I was there. I'm taking a couple photos. However, I wanna get the best possible photo I can of said mountain. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna wait for the right time of day. For me, that's either sunrise or sunset. Sunset, I find is better because it's the gift that keeps on giving. It literally, the sun looks amazing just before it sets. It looks great as it sets. And then there's some residual light after it sets. You've got like a whole little runway of amazing light where sunrise is just kind of like, and it's done and you got to get it in you know whatever but sunset you got more time to do it but you got to give yourself time so many times you hear people saying oh chasing the light yo chase hashtag chasing the light bro yo we're, we're light chasers you don't want to chase the light you want to be there for when the light is right so that you don't have to chase it. I mean, that's there's nothing worse than trying to actually beat sunset and get to somewhere or get to a spot that you wanna to get to before the sun sets, because when it starts going down, there ain't no stopping it. It goes fast, and the best photos, best results are gonna happen during that time, so be there on time. If you're there a couple hours before or an hour before, you can scout different locations, so you can say, okay, Right as the sun starts to set, I'm going to shoot a time lapse right here. As it's just peeking below the mountain, I'm gonna run over and shoot over there. And then in five minutes, when it's gone completely and the sky is just on fire from that residual light, I'm gonna come back to this spot and shoot stills. So having a plan, because you're there early, lets you execute and get all those images, get all of that footage that's gonna look the best from that entire day. So many people just don't wait for the right light. They just shoot it midday, they get back, they show their photos to the friends and I say, oh yeah, no, I've been there too. Yeah, check this out. Why does that look so good? Because I waited. So for me, I got the best possible shot that I could of the mountain instead of just shooting at midday. Now you might say, I'm not gonna be there at sunset, so how do I still get a great photo? 
In that case, uh, yeah, I mean, shoot it at midday and do the best you can. You might not, but that's why you plan and do your homework so that you can be at the spots you wanna be at the right times of day. Okay guys, so that's it for me today. And it's important to say that this stuff isn't just for people who are traveling or working abroad or going on assignment or vacation. If you're just going down to the city for the day to shoot, these tips will help you just as much. They still apply, it's a very wide range of information. It's not just for people who travel, vacation, or work. If you're just going around the corner, you can still take care of your gear, you can still use ND filters, and you can still do your homework and find the best spots around you. Okay, so use these tips. If you got something out of this video, hit that thumbs up button, give me a like, show me some love. Subscribe if you aren't already, and, and, mm, I'll see you guys in the next video.